Hey, Ori here with Go Outside and Cook, and today we're going to talk about casting. So this whole thing starts out yesterday when my wife and I came in from the lake. Uh, we had to come home a day early <clears throat> and uh, so our, our good friends, uh, Martin and Virginia Skibby comes over uh, with, uh, with, with uh, Greg and Gina McClung and they brought, uh, check this out, the mother of all skillets. <laughs> this is like a 20 inch, 20, 21 inch cast iron skillet, it's awesome cool thing about it is it fits perfectly in my Weber kettle so this is going to be fun let's talk about cast iron what it is and why we season it okay because there are some misconceptions about all that so <clears throat> basically we mine this iron ore out of the ground we heat it we put it under some pressure and it becomes molten iron and it gets poured into a cast or it gets poured into a mold so we're casting the iron that's your cast iron okay and the thing that's important to know about about cast iron is it doesn't fare very well in the elements okay this this iron once it is is cast from this mold and put into the, the, the form that it becomes has an immediate desire to return back to that red dust that it started and that's where you get your rust okay there's three ingredients uh, needed for this corrosion to happen. Um, one of them we're not really going to talk about because it just it's a physical characteristic of, of metal, in this case iron. So it's just something that exists that you have no control over. But there's two other ingredients needed for this process of corrosion to happen, and that's air and water. Okay? When these three things come together, that's where you get rust, and that's basically the iron going back to its original state. And if you were to take that piece of iron and leave it on the ground out in the elements over a period of time, it'll become a pile of red dust, just like it started from, okay? So, the way you stop that process is to remove one or more of those ingredients. And there's two of them that we can remove with one process. And that is by, uh, by, by creating a barrier coat of something um, on this metal that's going to keep that moisture and that air from getting to it. So, that's what the primary purpose of seasoning your cast iron is. Now, there's there's right and wrong ways to do this, and just like all barrier coats, you, you can't stick something on there really thick and cure it and get the same results as you would if you put layers and layers and layers of really thin coating and build it that way because it'll, it, by doing a thin coat, because we're using oils to season our cast iron, these thin coats allow it to harden and, and seal properly. If you just try to do it in one thick coat, it may, it'll never cure. In other words, it'll always just stay loose oil. And we want to have a hard shell barrier that's going to be able to put up with the punishment that you're going to get when you're cooking over fire. So, Okay, so I've got a super hot bed of coals underneath this, this skillet here, and I've heated this skillet up to it's extremely hot. We're talking in excess of 500 degrees. So first off, there's going to be a few things you want to have on hand when you do this. You're going to need some kind of pot holder or something that says you can handle this iron. It's extremely hot. It'll burn you, so be very careful. Um, you're also going to want to have a roll of paper towels handy. And you're going to want to have a terry cloth rag. And you want to have a decent grade cooking oil of some kind. I'm using canola. Um, it's a good oil to use. I, I wouldn't recommend using vegetable oil. So make sure that you do as I say and not as I do you really need to have some kind of hand protection stuff some gloves um, something that's not going to react really bad to heat this oil gets extremely hot we're going to pour it in here and we're going to spread it as thinly as we can and then wipe it out as quickly as we can we don't want pulling oil in here we just want to spread it out super thin and then immediately wipe it out now you'll notice that I'm getting snagging from that stippled surface on the cast iron and it's pulling little bits and pieces of that uh, paper towel away. That's our non-stick quality. You know, what we're doing here is we're building thin layers of oil and curing them in to fill the little valleys 
in that step open. So we, you have peaks and valleys, and we want to get that, that coating built up from the valleys into the peaks to give us a smoother cooking surface. And that's going to give us our secondary uh, purpose of, of uh, seasoning cast iron is to get a, a nice non-stick surface. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing this cycle over and over again. I don't know how many cycles this particular piece of iron is going to take because they're all different as far as how rough the surfaces are and, and everything. This one was pre-seasoned, and so that means it had already a coating, a barrier coating put on it. It's not one that I would rely on. It, you know, keep in mind that as you use your cast iron, this stuff degrades. So you're constantly adding and seasoning. You know, you season after every cook or before. You're just always seasoning. And as you're cooking in it, you're actually seasoning in it, believe it or not. So, so we just continue to, to go through this cycle of adding one layer at a time. You want to make sure that the smoke completely dissipates. That tells you that you've got all that, that stuff that, that degrades is completely gone. And what's left behind is the, uh, uh, the, the most durable of the cured coating on your cast iron. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. Be very careful. Work slow. You don't want to get burnt doing this because you can really, really get burnt. There's also another method. I wouldn't do it on this bigger cast iron normally because it's just such a big surface to cover in a short period of time. Uh, but on smaller pieces of cast iron, Instead of pouring the oil into the surface of the pan, you can actually uh, take like a terry cloth rag, or you can do it with your uh, with your paper towels. But you can you can you can actually just apply oil directly to your rag, and then wipe it in and make a thin coat that way. Again, it'll do better on on smaller pieces. This one here, I don't know that I'll get this the coverage. In fact, I'm not getting the coverage I want, but you kind of get the uh, the idea. Let that smoke dissipate. And we'll go ahead and pour a little more oil in here and thin it out properly. You can see how that surface is starting to develop a little bit of a sheen to it. And that just tells us that our coatings are properly building layer by layer. Put some oil in here and get it spread out thin. You're also starting to see the oil in the, in the pan is starting to bead a little bit, which is also showing you that you're getting that nonstick quality that you want. It's not drinking the oil up like it was, in other words. Just wipe it all out. Let the smoke dissipate. This is gonna make a very nice surface. I can already tell, I can see by looking at this, how level that surface that cooking area is getting. I think we're going to probably do about 20 layers in total on this one. I've got to go as many as 30 on others. And something else I'll also mention is I, I would refrain from doing any kind of water-based cooking in your new cast iron. Things like braising or maybe stews or something like that. I'd kind of stay away from that until I've had a few cooks behind me on more fat-based foods, so like frying and you know fried meats and, and stuff like that. Um, all the fat that comes out of your, your food, the same thing uh, kind of happens with it. You know, it dissipates things off and leaves something behind to help add to that next barrier coat. So you're constantly trying to keep the barrier coating up on your cast iron. Once you know you've got a good hard shell there, then you can kind of go down to doing those those water-based cooks with your iron. Kind of getting toward the end of the cycle here, but you can see that that, uh, that cooking surface is looking nice and shiny. 
we've lost a lot of heat in this through the cycles that we've done. But I think we're just about where we need to be on this. Yeah, this is gonna be a nice piece of iron. I'll tell you what I'll do. You know, we uh, I'll put I'll, I'll put an affiliate link to this particular cast iron skillet down in the uh, description below. And if you just in case you want to purchase one, this is a great uh, a great skillet. It, it fits so well in my my 22 inch Weber. It's like having a big old uh, you know just a big uh, griddle on the pit. So. This is gonna be great when I'm when I'm cooking several people breakfast and stuff like that. I'll have all the cooking surface I need. So we're gonna let this smoke just kind of dissipate out of there. And then we'll do a, we'll, we'll flip it over and I'll do a single barrier coat on the outside of this. And I'll usually add a barrier coat to the outside after every cook or before every cook. And then we'll be ready to uh, throw something in it and see how she does. Yeah, that's a beautiful surface. Now we're going to go ahead and give this thing a test and see how it does. I like to, I like to use bacon and eggs as a good test. Eggs can be really sticky on a surface of a skillet. And believe it or not, even though it's got lots of stuff in it and good stuff in it, so can bacon. Uh, bacon is cured with salt and sugars, and those sugars have a tendency to leave those brown bits behind and kind of grab onto the surface. So I expect to have a little bit of a little bit of that grabbing onto the surface of the skillet, and that should easily be scraped off. Just a little scrape with your spatula there should knock it loose pretty easily. So. Looking good. Didn't get any sticking on the bacon on this test cook. I'm go ahead and bring some eggs in there. And you can imagine if we didn't have that, that cure building up in those valleys and between those peaks on that rough cast iron, this egg would go into those little valleys and it would just grab that surface profile and stick like crazy. Uh, but you can see it just easily flips around. That is perfectly seasoned. Perfectly seasoned. We'll let it sear a little bit and see if it continues to release. nothing better than just a good piece of cast iron properly seasoned like this yeah there's nothing sticking here well there you go mission accomplished all right so once we've finished cooking on your cast iron uh, you're going to want to just get you a paper towel, wipe all that fat stuff that was left behind, just spread it out on a nice thin layer just like uh, just like we did when we were seasoning. This is how you continue your seasoning after every cook. Spread it out thin and you can store it that way if, you, uh, if you're going to cook on it in a very near future like maybe the following day. If not, I would recommend turning the heat up and, and uh, curing that until it dries and the smoke goes away just like, uh, like we did when we were seasoning it. So. You can take in any brown bits that might be stuck on that behind. Just give them a nice mild scrape. Don't gouge it. Just wipe it thin and in this case I'm going to wipe this thin, turn it over so I can apply a little bit of seasoning to the outside of the skillet and she's ready for next time. Also note that a lot of people will tell you you can't use soap in these and stuff. If it's cured this way you absolutely can. You have a barrier coat there 
uh, you'll notice that when you put water in this pan, like if you're washing it, rinsing it out, you'll see the water beating off. The soap will do the same thing. It'll re remove any any uncured oils and stuff like that. Residues will all be removed from that soap, but that barrier coat will not hold on to any of it. So that's just, uh, you know, if you're the kind that just keeps yourself oiled all the time and you don't have a good barrier coat, yeah, different result. So we flipped it over and just gonna add a nice uh, coating of oil to the outside to help cure that on and protect it. And you can see on this side of the pan how rough that surface is. And the cooking surface on the inside was exactly like this when we started. So again, you're seeing the paper towel snagging up and all that good stuff. So, so yeah, we'll just apply this barrier coat. We're gonna cover every single little microscopic piece in this barrier coating and I will continue as I go through cooks to go ahead and add these barrier coats so and again I'll, I'll leave a an affiliate link to this this skillet down below and as well as a, uh, some of the 22 inch Weber options all right there you have it now you've witnessed a proper seasoning of a cast iron skillet you can use this method on all your cast iron you can do it on your stove top you can do it using your oven um, just remember you're working with something that's super hot and you can get burned uh, at one point in this seasoning process um, I got a little too much oil down in there and I was wiping it out and I got in too big a hurry and a little bit sloshed up nailed me here on the thumb okay so that wraps this one up you are now armed with all the knowledge you need to go out there and start seasoning up your cast iron to make a nice non-stick well seasoned cast iron skillet dutch oven whatever it is you got and I want to say thank you so much to my my friends the skibbies and the mcclungs for coming over and bringing this over to me it's going to be well cared for and well loved i promise you that so i'm going to be doing a uh, follow-up q a video so if you have questions uh that or, or maybe clarification that you need just put it in the comments below um, i'm going to put that together with some questions i've been asked in the past and i'll do a, a whole q a video on that just to clarify some things for everybody so leave your comments make sure to give us a like Follow us on Facebook and subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos.